Let's talk about the range officers and the line officials. These people are in charge. They're in charge of gun safety, shooter safety, range safety, and keeping the match rolling, keeping the match moving along. You want to anticipate what the line officers and the range officers and officials are going to tell you. They're here to make the process of the match go smooth and safe. They're here really to help you. So what you want to do is anticipate when they're going to tell you to move your gear to the line or anticipate when they tell you that your prep period is going to begin or what have you. Be in front of these events. Don't be reactive to them. Be proactive. If you're in front of the events and you're always staying in front, you're going to be able to be much more calm, less anxiety ridden, and be much more focused on your shot process, thus improving your performance. When you come to Camp Perry, things seem to go faster. Things seem to speed up. Well, part of that's just nerves and anxiety because, you know, it's the Nationals. It's our Super Bowl. This is the center point of competitive shooting in North America when it comes to high power, bullseye, small bore. The legacy here is tremendous. This is the place to be. So everybody responds to that a little bit. Your heart beats a little faster, you walk a little quicker, you know, and sometimes we have a tendency to sort of overlook some of the small things. Make sure you focus on the stuff you can get done before you go to the line. Have your magazines already loaded. Have your data book filled out. Have your dope already put on the gun. If you just come off from 200 yards, make sure you put your 300 yard dope on and know that you've done it. Make sure that you've got your gear and your kit where you need it to be so you're not fishing around looking for your muffs or your, your, you know, your pen or whatever, or your, your magazines or your bullets for goodness sakes. You wanna basically anticipate and basically dry run and kind of you know imagine yourself going through the match maybe the night before, maybe on the drive up to Camp Perry or the flight to Camp Perry. You wanna show up here being prepared. Now there are a lot of folks that come here and it's a wonderful family environment. It's like a vacation. It's, there's nowhere better than this place. This place is wonderful. But there's a lot of people that come up here for those things, but they also come to win. And those people are the ones that do these things and prepare themselves before they get to the firing line. There's a rough statistic that's probably pretty accurate. 95% of the winning is done by 5% of the shooters. Now, when we think about that, what that basically means is that there's a monopoly of a very small few that keep winning everything. Well, why is that? It's because those people pay attention to the small details. They make sure their magazines are already loaded. They have their data book already filled out. They have their dope already on their gun. They've already got their gear in position. They've already anticipated setting their scope up and their shooting mat up a certain way. They're already looking down range early, early in the prep period or before the prep period has actually been called. And they're looking at the mirage and they're putting data in their, note, in their book trying to say, okay, this is what I want to put on my gun. Right now, if I had to shoot right now, I'd be two left. These people are prepared. These people are not just kind of coming out here willy-nilly and sort of saying, well, gee, let's see how it works out. I'm just going to go through the motions. No. The professional shooters down here on, you know, Armor's Row, you've got the AMU and the Armor Reserve and the Marines and Marine Reserve and, and all the other big teams. These guys shoot for a living. It's their job. They take it very serious. They go into it being prepared. They write down their data. They write down their performance. They analyze and critique what they did, whether it was good or whether it was bad. You know, a lot of times when we're shooting, here's something that's interesting. Have you ever noticed that people always try to analyze why they had a bad shot? Like, well, I just don't know. I mean, I mean, elevation seemed good, but wow, where did that seven at like two o'clock come from? That's good. Analyze those things. Probably side alignment. Probably, you know, you, you aped the trigger a little bit and pushed it, pushed the shot up or what have you. But why don't we ask pinwheel X? Why did I get a pinwheel X? What did I do that allowed me to have a great shot? At most, we go, oh, wow, man, did you see that X I just shot? Did you see that great group? We don't analyze what did we do that made us shoot, you know, a good solid clean with a bunch of Xs. We need to kind of be prepared mentally. You've heard it said before, shooting is 90% mental, 10% performance. It's probably true. It's probably true. At Camp Perry, it's more imperative than ever to be mentally prepared and be in front of these events so that when you get up here, You've already gone through the process. You're not surprised when you get a command or when it all of a sudden seems like, wow, was that three minutes? Are we ready to shoot already? Practice these things. One thing that I would encourage young shooters and new shooters to do is to actually practice competing. And what I mean by that is go through the motions of what you will be doing when you're called to the line at Camp Perry. Go through the motions of, okay, what am I going to put first? Am I going to carry my card up there and am I going to set my scope stand down first or am I going to lay my shooting mat out first? Whatever your routine is, 
have a routine and stick to it because you want to be able to stay in your shot process so that you are prepared and you're in front of each event. You're not surprised and all of a sudden reacting to something. Okay? So when you do that, it allows you to be in control. And a shooter that's in control is a shooter who's performing at their best. I'm standing here on the 300 yard line on Rodriguez Range at Camp Perry. It is here at the 300 yard line that leg matches are typically lost for most shooters. Offhand is always a struggle, but if you get a good process with offhand, you can develop a good shot sequence and you can get your scores up. But it's at the 300 yard line that you don't have the luxury of being able to see a scored shot value after each shot. The best you can do is shoot two shots, hope you can scope and see where they're at the target, make an adjustment, and shoot your next eight. With the 223, it's very difficult to see the bullet holes, especially in different atmospheric conditions. One thing you can do is ensure that you get a new target face if it's been shot up. It'll help you see the holes a little bit better. Most shooters are very courteous and they want to have a, a new face on their target, so they always reface. But if you look down and you spot and go, whoa, I've got a target face that's really full of pasters and I can't see where my bullets are going to hit, you have the right to ask for a reface. Now on the 300 yard line, the trick is to be able to look at the wind conditions and to make a good wind call and have confidence in your wind call. How do you get confidence in wind calling? Experience. You got to go out and you have to shoot enough to know what you need to put on the gun. So if you're a young shooter, you basically have to sort of, you know, pay your dues and kind of go, wow, I didn't put enough on that time and it really pushed me out. But make sure that you write it down. Make sure you record something. At Camp Perry, it's critical that you keep good data. In your scorebook, you want to write down all the data you can. You want to make sure that you put what the light conditions were, what the wind direction was, what the speed was, what the mirage was. And here's where that's valuable. It may not help you today, but it'll help you tomorrow or maybe next year. No one's really given me a satisfactory answer to this, but personally, my zeros are always different considerably for Camp Perry. Typically, I'm going to be a minute higher for my elevation at Camp Perry. Don't know why. It, is it light? Is it humidity? We don't know. And it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is that your zeros may be different. For some people, they're low or they're right or they're left. Who knows? For me, my windage and all is solid. That's position. But for the elevation, consistently, I'm a minute higher here than I would be anywhere else. How do I know that? Well, you know what? I probably laid down and shot a rapid fire string in the President's 100 and thought I had the right elevation on and come to find out all my stuff was out the bottom of the 10 ring and the 9 ring because my elevation was different here. What did I do? Well, you know, I wrote it down on my scorebook and my data book and I made sure that I kept good data to ensure that the next time I came up here or the next time I came to shoot, I went, wow, you know, note to self, put an extra minute up on the gun to make sure I'm in the black. Now, light condition has a lot to do with this. Oftentimes, like today, it's a beautiful blue sky day, small puffy white clouds but very very bright a lot of times that'll affect your elevation we've all heard the we've all heard the phrase lights up sights up now if it's dark and overcast you need to know what your zero is then too for instance let's say we shot today and we got our zero but a storm front moves in and tomorrow it's dark and gray I mean it can get so dark and gray up here it looks like the end of the world's coming I mean it's so gloomy well that's gonna radically change your zero you need to know what that stuff is that's why writing data down and having a good process of keeping good data in your book is critical to be the best high power shooter you can be. Because really you're building on previous knowledge, experience, mistakes, and successes. And if you do that, think a year ahead. You should be thinking about what I'm writing down today is going to make me a better shooter next year. That's really the secret to being a consistent top performer up here at Camp Perry. Camp Perry, you have to pay particular attention to the flags, but also the mirage. There's many ranges that have flags that are pretty accurate, and Camp Perry is one of them. If you watch the flags, they're going to give you a great indicator. But what will happen is the flags will tell you something, but then the mirage has got a little bit of extra out there for you, and if you don't notice that, you'll underdope the flags. Now, in some places, you got to just ignore the flags because they seem to always lie, or you ignore the mirage. But here, it's again a matter of paying attention and watching. One thing you can do as a shooter is you can sit back on the ready line, and before it's your time to shoot, 
you can say, okay, I'm going to look at my scope and I'm going to watch what happens with the shooters in front of me and I'm going to watch the flags and I'm going to watch the mirage. And if you're in the scope and you're studying, you'll find out, wow, the mirage is boiling a little bit right now. And all of a sudden you'll see people that didn't catch that, their shots will be overdoped right or left, wherever the mirage was pushing them. And then when it comes back, they'll be back in and a lot of shooters go, well, what happened? You know, I didn't see anything change. Likewise, sometimes flags can change. When you think about Camp Perry, you have a vast open area here. So the wind value is going to be considerably more than at a lot of more protected ranges. A lot of ranges throughout the country have trees or berms or mountains or geographic features that sort of protect the range. So there'll be swirly spots and there'll be spots that are kind of more of a, you know, a protected area. At Camp Perry, there's really no protection. That's good and that's bad. You always hear it on, you know, Valley Range. Well, if you get over next to the trees, that's the sweet spot, you know, because it protects the wind. Well, it can, but it can also allow the wind to come in and kind of swoop and cause some squirrely things to happen that can be a detriment. I've always experienced at Camp Perry that as long as the value is consistent, and whether it's three-quarter value, half value, or what have you, if it's coming across and you can see it, you can prepare for it. So it's not that big a deal. You just have to prepare for it and know, okay, I got to put, you know, six clicks or three minutes on my gun, and in these conditions, I'm going to be right in. There. Basically, everybody out here shooting in the same condition. The big difference is some people get lucky relays. Some people get on a relay where the wind is calmer. It's the luck of the draw. Everybody has to deal with that. When you're shooting slow fire, you need to be paying attention to the wind flags, of course. But let's say you're shooting slow fire. You shoot, you drop a shot down range, you roll over in the scope, waiting for that target to come up to see your shot value. While you're waiting for that shot value to come up, you should be analyzing the mirage. You should be looking at the mirage going, did it pick up? Did it let off? Has it sort of changed directions? Is it boiling? And as you're looking at that, you're multitasking. You're not just waiting for the shot value. You're thinking about, do I need to put right or left on? Do I need to add some, take some off? Am I good? And then as you roll back over, after you get your shot value, you plot, record the shot. You basically look in your peripheral vision. You look at the flags. You kind of see that they're not doing anything different. If they are, you adjust to it. And when you adjust to it, you're always in front of the wind conditions. The trick at Camp Perry is staying in front of the conditions you're shooting in. Let's talk about the squatted practice a little bit. With the squatted practice, a lot of folks kind of, you know, come out and shoot and they think it's good to get, you know, kind of, you know, get the jitters out. And it is good. It's good to get out here and go, wow, I'm at Camp Perry. I'm no longer at my home range. But let's talk about practicing smartly. The squatted practice now consists of a 300 yard practice slow fire. And then you come back to 600 yards, as we are here on Rodriguez right now, and you shoot at the 600 yard line. 300 yards is basically verifying your elevation and your zero. Now you're going to probably be able to shoot an A wind condition and what I would challenge you to do is make the most of that practice. Let's say that you lay down and you go look it's a medium mirage I've got about a you know a quarter value wind coming from two o'clock on the flags I'm going to just shoot my zero no wind don't try to dope the wind on your first shot just shoot a no wind zero shot and see how far it pushes your bullet out. How often do you get a chance to see what the wind value will actually do to your bullet at Camp Perry? Usually never because we're so worried about doping our shots into the center because we don't want to give up points. Let's talk about the squatted practice again shooting the 600 yard line. Shooting at the 600 yard line, they give you 10 minutes to shoot an unlimited number of shots. Now, most shooters tend to try to put their dope on and they try to shoot for a score. The score doesn't matter. There's not even scorekeepers in the squatted practice. So why are you trying to shoot for a score? I think it's much wiser to shoot to collect data, something that could help you in a shooting condition that you might run into later on down the road, maybe the very next day. For instance, when I shoot the squatted practice at 600 yards, I will look at a wind condition and I will record that wind condition. And I will look at the flags, I'll look at the mirage, and I'll say, okay, I believe that this wind condition is worth this much. But when I lay down, I'll shoot it with a no wind zero on, as if there's no wind. Because I want to see how much it's going to push my bullet out. But then, I will go ahead and dope my gun and see if my wind call was correct. Another thing I'll do is I will start with what I call a no wind zero in a, in a condition. Now I might in my head go, I think it's worth three and a half. But instead of putting three and a half on the gun, I'll shoot zero wind. They pull it, it comes up, and I go, wow, okay, that pushed me out an eight at nine o'clock. Well, I'll put one minute right on it, and I'll shoot another shot, and go, wow, well, see, now it's a wide 10 at 
9 o'clock. And then I'll shoot another shot and I'll come a minute right again and I'll say, oh, now I'm a narrow X, pretty much center. Well, what that tells me is I can, I can anticipate how much each minute's going to move me. It's another experience of being able to take an opportunity at Camp Perry and build a repertoire of data that can help you somewhere down the road. This is incredibly valuable when you go back and you look at your scorebook and you say, wow, look how I walked that bullet into the center and look at the shot values go up from this to this to this as I put this much windage on the gun. This is an opportunity that shouldn't be lost on most new shooters, but unfortunately most shooters lay on the line and they try to basically shoot 100 or whatever a perfect score would be and they're not learning anything new. Now, yes, they might need to practice their hole. They might need to practice their side alignment. They might need to practice, you know, trigger control and et cetera, et cetera. But to be honest, you should have those things squared away before you come to Camp Perry. Camp Perry is an opportunity to experience the environment that you get here. You need to prepare for that. Collecting data in your scorebook and kind of doing some creative practice shooting gives you an opportunity to do that.